Hey, this is Matt. And this is Caleb. We're uh, Boosted Broncos. We wanted to take you through our next step in the process, and that's the fuel system for these early Broncos. So I'm going to pause and flip the camera around. Here, I wanted to show you our uh, latest bling, Boosted Bronco uh, t-shirt. As we're getting started on the fuel system, one of the first intro things that I will say is the, the benefit of using a production fuel pump is that you don't have to run a, a baffled tank. Uh, these production fuel pumps uh, have a, a, a built-in reservoir with a, with a check valve system on the bottom where it'll intake fuel just gravity feed and then it, it, keeps, it keeps fuel in this reservoir to prevent from starving the pump in, in different conditions. All right, so here's our, our fuel system installed in, in the early Bronco. Just going to take you through some highlights. So we, um, we require a two-inch body lift. You can see the, the body lift blocks are stacked there, uh, providing a little bit of clearance over the top of the tank. Okay. We, with the intention with this tank is, is to provide a bit of a, a block um, so that you don't see the, the clearance uh, with the body lift and so this runs up right right next to the the bottom of the body line and uh, another couple of highlights in order to meet up with the with the inlet um, or the spout from the uh, fuel filler we we bring the the inlet here for the tank up just a little bit and you can also see a couple of other key things we recess our um, we recess our fuel pump. The, the tank itself is, I believe, 13 inches deep, but this fuel pump likes to sit at about 12. And by recessing it, it provides us, uh, as we need about two inches of clearance from this point up to clear the hoses and everything. And so this gives us enough clearance to where you can reach in and make some adjustments without pulling the body or dropping the tank. Um, a couple of other things. The... Uh, the, the fuel pump module that we like to use actually comes from a, a 15 to 17 model year expedition. Now I've got one of these set out. And so this one in, in particular is for the long wheelbase, the 131 inch wheelbase version. And uh, from bottom to, to top, it's about 10 and a half inches. And so what we do is, is we, we pull these rods, the original rods, and they're, they're roughly quarter inch stainless. And then we replace them with rods that are a bit longer to give us that that 12 inch uh, 12 inch height that we stack height that we want. Now you can see the the fuel pressure hose here coming from the from the pump up to the outlet. That has enough room in it where we can lengthen those lines as well as the electrical leads here, uh, or lengthen these rods to be able to to get the length that we want. Now, the other thing that we do, um, and I, I should mention that this, this pump isn't included with the tank, um, but these are mods that we do for, for putting it in the, the tank. The, uh, the tank just comes, as, as you see, without the pump with the uh, adapter uh, to be able to bolt this down. The production fuel pump module here uses a big O-ring. Um, you're probably familiar with the, the big green O-ring that goes in. And so we've, we've machined a groove in, in this quarter-inch metal plate, and then we put in six studs and a clamp ring, and, and that enables it to, to sill against the elements and, and maintain um, you know, positive uh, pressure inside the tank. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to mention is you can see that this uh, fuel indicator uh, float rod is is designed to work with the uh, the specific height that the module is installed in the tank, and what we do is is build another one out of three thirty second stainless welding rod that extends it out uh, a couple more inches to where it will read uh, full and and empty as appropriate with the the different height tank. Okay, so that's the that's the fuel pump module. We really like this one because it only has two outlets on top, one for the fuel pressure, and then this one here is is in, is attached to what's referred to as a vapor vent valve. And so this is a float valve that enables vapor to, to vent and it, it shuts off the 
it shuts off the fill for the tank when when the float reaches the top and and blocks that off and this connects just via via hose like you see here it connects up here to the um to the smaller of the two for for the vent now this being a 77 i believe 76 and 77 which use the poly tank they they have a two and a quarter inch um uh, inlet here and so we've we've done a, a larger two and a quarter inlet here for for non 76 and 77 and probably uh, if you get any aftermarket parts, they would be for, for non-76 or 77 um, for new bodies and, and such. Uh, they, I believe, take an inch and three quarter, if memory serves me right. So that's that's what would typically be there is, is the inch and three quarter, but we've upsized this one for, for this specific application. Now, the fuel system... Um, Again, we, we just sell the tank and the adapter ring and, and such, but for this installation where we took it from, from beginning to end, we, we've got our, our hard fuel, fuel line installed from here going all the way to the front. You can see if I take the camera a little different angle that it runs along the frame rail and, and is clipped along with the uh, brake line using the factory style clips and, and runs up here, um, runs up here towards, towards the front. And then I've got another short uh, stainless braided line that connects it in the back. Now this is the Gen 2 EcoBoost. The, the Gen 1 has a fuel pump that's mounted up over here. And, and so the, the line would be similar uh, if you were to bend one for, for a Gen 1. And, and then the, uh, the stainless braided line would just be a little bit longer and run over to this location for the Gen 1. Uh, there's some... There's some skill required in, in getting these uh, AN6 um, braided stainless lines done. And I'll take you through a, a how-to at, at some point in the future on the ways that I've found to be able to, to put the ends on these um, with the least uh, amount of problems. So just a quick close-up here. Uh, hopefully you can see, but there's a quick connect here, a 3 8 quick connect um, that connects to the factory fuel system there. And then if I move to the back, we've got a, a 3 8 quick connect here in the back as well. This one uh, specifically has a 90 degree on it, and that enables us to, to fit real nice. So a couple other key points about the, the, the control system that we use. You can see here this block that we've mounted on top of the frame cross member. This is for the uh, electronic returnless fuel system that's that's used for from the factory and so this controls um, it, it uses a PWM signal if if you're familiar with that it pulls with modulated signal and it controls uh, it controls the speed of the pump to control uh, how fast the pump um, spins to to provide pressure now for the for the gen 2 fuel system it actually has the uh, the pressure sensor that it uses to control to on the fuel rail of the engine. And so it's tucked up there in, inside. For a Gen 1 system, they, they had, a, um, they had a, a fuel pressure sensor back here closer to the tank. And so that would be plumbed in for a Gen 1 system. And that would provide feedback to, to, the, uh, um, to, to the fuel pump uh, control module over here. So... So basically, uh, one last thing I wanted to mention, I've, I've got a, a couple of rods here. I'd mentioned that, that, we, uh, that we replaced the factory rods. This here is just quarter inch stainless. Uh, I believe the original rods are about seven and a half inches long. And so to get the extra height that we wanted for, for the fuel pump dropping in, um, I believe that we're running uh, about 10 and a half on, on these rods, uh, if I remember correctly. And then for the hard line that we plumbed, this is something that you can get at your typical metal supply places. But this is uh, 304 stainless, uh, 3 8 tubing, and this is 0.035 walls, so 35 thousandths. Um, you can probably get away with a little thinner wall, but I definitely would not go thicker because this as is is pretty challenging to bend. And I just used a, a simple bend tool. Let me show it here. 
I believe I, I bought this uh, years ago at, at Summit Racing for a project that I was doing. And this is one of the more simple ones, but that's what I used to bend the hard line. Okay, just wanted to give you a couple of different angles here on the, uh, <clears throat> on the fuel rail running forward. And, and then we'll, we'll put on some, uh, we'll put on a, a clip probably that'll attach here and, and then a, a hold down there. There's, <clears throat> excuse me, with this uh, 10 or 80 trans, there's actually a couple of holes in the ribbing as we run up along the trans that we could, uh, we could zip tie or attach to as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, couple of, of minor things to mention. The reason we chose this routing for, for this specific application was uh, typically the factory um, comes off the frame rail and then it runs up along the trans in, in this area and then up to the, up to the connection. But for this application where we've got the Dana 20, and with this one, again, we're trying to preserve the, the J-shift mechanism. And so we'll build uh, a bracket or adapter to be able to do that. But this, uh, by bringing the line uh, over and, and then running on this side, it just frees up that space where we're away from, from the trans shifter. And if you're running twin stick, I believe that <clears throat> JB Fab, the one they do, uh, uses these two bolts. And, and comes off that going this way. And so this would clear that as well. All right, that's about it for what we wanted to show you on fuel system. Again, I appreciate you watching. We've got more things up and coming here. We're just about ready to set the body down on this one. Um, and it's it's hard not to get a little ahead of ourselves and get excited and, and throw some wiring on it and, and do a test fire. And maybe we'll do that still. But I uh, appreciate you watching. Again, this is our fuel system uh, consisting mostly of the, the tank and then the uh, fuel pump module that you would need to, to purchase independently as well as the, the fuel line. Those things are just a little bit hard to ship. And so um, the assumption is that if you're doing this kind of a swap, some of those basic skills like being able to bend, bend a tube and and uh, do some uh, stainless steel flexible lines or, or things that would be within your, your uh, skill set. And we would rely on you to, to use that for this. So thanks for watching. We've got some more good stuff up and coming, uh, as well as a video that we're gonna put out about what I would call hacks. Um, so simple things that, that we've found in doing these installations that just makes things a lot easier. And so look for that in, in the next couple of days. We'll be posting that hacks video. So from Matt and Caleb, um, we, uh, well, uh, before I say goodbye, let me just say, if you want to reach out to us, uh, reach out through boostedbroncogarage at gmail.com. I should have mentioned that at the beginning. Uh, we are selling these kits and uh, we'd sure love to outfit you with one to get you in the the new uh, zone of cool for these classic Broncos. So thanks again. Uh, Going to sign off here.